Welcome to the tutorial. In this one we're going to make a classic, it's a random number generator, and what we're going to do is turn that into a dice rolling app. Let's get started. So this is it, the final app. Uh, this is, we should have moving pictures, we should have sound effects, and if you listen carefully you can hear the motor buzzing as well. Let's get started by adding in a button, drag and drop it onto your screen, choose whatever colours you like, and we're just going to use some text uh, to show the numbers before we move on and do any pictures. In the blocks then, what's going to happen is the user will come along, they'll click the button, and what we're going to do is we're going to change that text property for the moment, and we're going to have it display a random number. So if it's a standard die, we're looking at numbers between 1 and 6. So the next thing we're going to do is add in our sound component and upload our sound file. If you're unsure of what component you want to use, there's little question marks beside and they give you little tool tips on what's happening. Back in our code, uh, all we have to do is add in the sound1.play, and if you like, you can use sound1.fibrate as well, putting in a value here in milliseconds, so 500 milliseconds. All that means is that our uh, motor is going to buzz for half a second. The final thing we'll do then to set up our app is set the source for sound1. That's going to be our WAV file in this case, so I had a few of them, like dice1 and dice2.wav, but again, just make sure that you've got the correct file extension there. So to improve the app functionality, rather than just generating one random number, we want to spit out a whole load of different numbers, just like our dice rolling. We're going to add in the clock component, and then we're going to create a variable in our app. So I've called this spin counter. It's going to keep track of, or it's going to count the number of spins that the die is done. Uh, we'll start counting at uh, zero or one. Doesn't really make a huge difference here. And every time our clock goes off, we are going to put essentially display another random number on the um, button for the user. So when the user clicks the, the die, clicks the button, we're going to change this now to set the timer enabled to be true. And then once we've got to a certain point in our app, we're going to uh, get the timer to stop counting. So where is that predefined point? Well, what we'll do is we'll check, has it spun uh, 10 times? So what we'll do is we'll check, uh, is it greater than or equal to uh, 10? So we can just grab our value here from spin counter, pop in a 10 there, and everything should be more or less ready to go. So now what we want to do is we want to increment or we want to increase our spin counter every time the clock ticks. This is a very standard kind of thing to do. We're going to set it to spin counter plus one. So it'll go up one count or one spin at a time. Every time then the dice is spinning around, what we'll do is we'll change this one here, the button text, uh, to be another random number is fine for the moment. Again, so we should see just a whole series of changing numbers. The last thing we want to do is add in our images. What I've done is I've used similar names for all six sides of my die, uh, dice, hyphen, and then the number of spots that'll be on it. Uh, over in our app, what we're going to do is to uh, import or load in these images. Uh, we're going to join together the word uh, dice and the symbol hyphen at the beginning. We'll put in a random number so it doesn't go through them in any particular order. Uh, so it could be dice one, dice three, dice two, any, any uh, order we want, and at the end then, we'll put in our file extension, our file type, which is .png. So if you want to save yourself a little bit of time, it's sometimes a good idea to duplicate your blocks just by right-clicking on them and choosing duplicate, so we could reuse it here and duplicate it again and uh, display a new image when the dice is spinning down here in our clock1.timer event. But if you're observant, you'll notice that being kind of lazy like this uh, is also error prone because what I've done is I've used text property instead of the image. So not too hard. We only get three changes to make here. That's not, not a big deal. Um, but at this stage now, everything is up and running and should work just like we saw at the beginning of the app. Uh, all I'm noticing there is that we've got a little bit of repetition. So we're using those exact same four blocks in three different locations. To make our lives a little bit easier, to make our code easier to maintain, maybe if we want to uh, use different types of dice, maybe die with uh, 12 faces, what we can do is put this all into a procedure, we'll call it random image, and then we just use the random image block three times here, and then in our screen initialize event as well. So when we're finished with the join block, just delete them, there's no need for them anymore. And that's it, that's the whole thing done. Uh, it still works the exact same way, it just means the code is a little bit easier to read, it's a little bit easier to update, and this would generally be considered kind of good coding practice. So the whole thing then, when we test it out, works perfectly. 
we're able to change different random numbers, plays our sound effect, um, and uh, gets the motor to buzz a little bit as well. If you like the video, uh, hit the thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.